Honourable is still with us in the studios. Just, just before we went on break, we were about to answer the questions as to, you know, why militants were in Benue in the first instance. Well, this may take some study to actually unravel how we, we came to have this, uh, uh, th th this phenomenon in our midst. Because uh, some say it, it came as a result of uh, the fight. Uh, indeed, this fight, uh, or these attacks on Beno communities on, uh, across the, uh, the, the border, especially from Taraba border. You know, before they came, they used to come, uh, I mean, before they started coming in, uh, uh, and having this fight internally. They will come across the border and, and hit and run back. So uh, what I hear, uh, it's unconfirmed, is that uh, some of these people arm themselves in order to contain this attack. And uh, uh, I don't know how things sn snowballed or, or out, of, out of control. But I, really, I, I, a study will have to be made to really find out how we came to have uh, this, 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 this phenomenon of... Uh, of, of militancy in, in, in our midst. When the governor came, uh, he, he gave, like I mentioned earlier, he gave uh, amnesty. And these people accepted it. At least majority of, of them accepted it. Uh, but along the way, I, I don't know what went wrong. The governor's uh, aide was killed, and the man ran into the bush. The Ghana, the notorious Ghana, ran, ran back into the bush. Uh, uh, Truly, the security will have to do their job, so we know whether he's responsible or whoever is responsible. But what is important is that the people would love to go about their normal duties as uh, uh, any other Nigerian. It's critically important because the, it's, it's almost like uh, the Twin Towers being attacked because as far as the Beno community is concerned, Zaki Biam is the largest uh, young market, and you go and attack in the fashion that they are, they are, they are, they are, they are showing on TV there uh, is it's really sad. Really sad. Well, let's go to Lagos now for some questions from my colleagues. Thank you, Honorable. Um, you are well aware of the history of Fulani herdsmen across the African sub-region dating from the 13th to 14th century and the fact that the 1978 uh, Land Use Act of Nigeria uh, did not give the Fulani herdsmen an opportunity to own the lands under the uh, land occupancy policy, and that did push them to uh, to a point where the, the, they have nowhere to put their cattle. Now the governors were given the powers to give those certificates of occupancy. Do you see a disconnect because they don't have, the Fulani men don't have a place to graze their cattle, and the states have taken the rights or should I say, the herdsmen did not apply for those certificates of occupancy at that time, and that continues up to this point without any revisitation to the 1978 Land Use Act. Do you see a solution or a problem in that act such that it can be adjusted just so we stop having these clashes? Truly, I don't understand the point you are making. Uh, I mean, we, we, the Fulanis uh, find the Fulanis point, in several states. Point is, my point is this, it's clear. There was a policy in 1978 about the Land Use Act. That Land Use Act did not give the Fulani herdsmen the rights of ownership of land. So they have to move with their cattle along the route. Do you believe that if you have an occupancy policy for the herdsmen to now apply and be given occupancy for land, will it stop the clashes that we have re well, that's been recorded now? Well, that's exactly what everybody's saying. That, that's the position of Benue State. That, yeah, look, if you want to graze your, your cattle on any land, you, get, you, you, you apply and get a, a certificate of occupancy uh, which the governors have the right. If you go to Benue, you have Igbos, you have Yorubas, you have houses owning land in Benue State. I mean, the, the governor doesn't say, oh, uh, you, because you are not from Benue, we will not give you land. It, they are giving, and that, that applies across the federation. In any state you go and get land, uh, you apply for certificate of occupancy and get. And, and so, because if you come to Benue, and by the way, uh, between the 1950s when we were talking about grazing routes and, 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 and grazing land, uh, and now, this has been a huge population explosion. So you don't expect 
now to talk about uh, uh, grazing routes because I understand even part of Abuja was uh, mapped as grazing, grazing routes uh, way back then. Now, will you now say that uh, we should dismantle the structures in Abuja so that uh, uh, this cattle will be, be rooted across? Uh, across? I mean, it, it won't work that way. The better solution is that, well, okay, now this is, this is a business. Now, apply for a certificate of occupancy, get land, and put your cattle there. That's the decent way to do. That's how it's done across. I mean, if, because they have been doing it across, the, across time doesn't mean it, should, it must continue now, especially now that the reality of the movement does not allow for that kind of uh, uh, grazing, the kind of uh, business they are doing. Well, the governor, the governor of Benway State did come out last week to say that, yes, you can um, graze provided there is a land for you to graze, but Benway State doesn't have land for you. Where does that place the herdsmen in this equation? No, is this roaming about going up and down that the governor was talking about? I mean, even in Benway, if uh, the herdsmen uh, get land, they acquire land, I mean, they'll be free to, in, in that case, they, will be, they won't be going up and down. See, the problem comes when uh, people have their farms, and you bring the cattle and dislodge the farmers, kill them in the process. I mean, for God's sake, it doesn't, you can't end your livelihood at the expense of another person. That is just the simple point. Uh, I, I don't think the governor is saying that if the, the cattle uh, rearers, the herdsmen, want to purchase land in, in Benway and put their cattle there, he will not allow it. I don't think that's what he's saying. So now the situation that we have at hand is that these attacks have continued. Are there any quick fix solutions that you feel that states, especially the middle belt states, can take because that's where the attacks are prevalent? Are there any measures that they can take right now, apart from the disarming that you say that possibly will not come through? Well, I think the disarming is the first basic thing that ought to be done because I, I, I just related how the uh, governor, the previous governor, and the present governor had uh, meetings uh, with their counterparts across uh, Taraba and, 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 and Nasarawa uh, with the communities, I mean, leaders of both communities, the herdsmen and the farmers. And there appear to have been solutions found to it only for those people to appear and, and start attacking and claim that they don't know where these uh, herdsmen, these, these, these deadly herdsmen are, are coming from. So until you disarm these people, it will continue as far as uh, the experience that we've been having with them is concerned. They will continue. So the first basic thing that ought to be done is to disarm those people. I mean, you can't have people going with uh, illegal arms across. Because if you allow that, sooner than later, some people will start to acquire arms to defend themselves. Because you, you won't allow yourself to be mowed down like, like animals. I would, don't want a situation where that will happen. And the, be, the, the, the best thing that should be done before any other thing, is to disarm those, those deadly uh, 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 husbands.